What's happening, family? It is your man, CRB Jr., here at Motown Mafia Podcast, of course, the Big Boss Filmworks production. To my left is my brother and partner in crime, Big Lou. How you feeling, man? I'm good, man. I'm good, 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 good. Um, let me see, man. Well, let's, we'll retract, we'll, but um, just read in the Bahamas, first time, right? Beautiful. Beautiful visit, man. I mean, a lot of work done, a lot of sightseeing, a lot of friends made. The Bahamas was on point. That that was that was truly the shit. Okay, so if you guys haven't checked out the content, it's episode, it's pod sixty four. We shot it live in the Bahamas. Uh, we got a chance to catch up with a guy who we're really gonna do some more chronicling because the more we research this story, of course, we're talking about Basil Miller. He's the big whale out of the Bahamas that what my dad up, was brother doing. Basil. This. Shout out to Basil the Third. Shout out to Basil Jr. Shout out to the whole Miller family down there in the islands. Um, the more we get into his story, the bigger the story gets, the more remarkable this man's yeah. life and times was. Yeah. Um, so, and the hospitality that, that they showed us down there was much appreciated. But um, so you guys are going to get a chance to see some really once and once never spoke about stuff uh, in the Motown Mafia 2 remix un, uh, Motown Mafia Reloaded um, we're getting the band back together again so this will be directed by the world famous critically acclaimed Alan Bradley known to the public as Al Prophet the prophetic one the prophetic one yup 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 for real for real for real so we're excited about that so we were down in the Bahamas shooting some of that stuff and um, we're down in South Florida and we caught up with uh, Eddie Baby shout out to Eddie Baby and um, you know we're gonna bring in a lot more people um, for this project it's, it's gonna cover like the 80s when Pop and Eddie got out of jail and all of the events from the 80s and then actually going into the 90s and I think we're gonna run it all the way as best we can um, it's still in the early phases of production and you know how this thing works so yeah. you guys who don't know um, the editing floor ends up with more stuff than the actual <laughs> screen does absolutely but um, we, we, we know it's going to be hot because the, the content matter is awesome and um, mm -hmm. we're going to bring in some of the other people from the family here in the D and um, with that speaking about other family here in the D shout out to the big homie KK uh, once again he's got a great book out Yes, 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 these if these bricks, bricks could talk. If these bricks could talk, um, so sh look for him, and we'll put a, a link in our description, because I think he, he's doing it through his IG page. Yeah, 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 uh, I'll, I'll put up a link uh, uh, by the time this airs on... Uh, yeah, and uh, more people who I don't... It, They'll definitely be participating with us on the pod, and maybe even in the Motown Mafia 2, Motown Mafia Reloaded. Mm -hmm. um, we had bumped into uh, the homegirl, Big 50, um, at the book fair last month, or actually, yeah, last month. That yeah, was it was June. last month. Last month. Um, her book out, A Hood Tale, a Beyond BT with Big 50. Um, you guys haven't checked her out on Chap Queens or any of the bar, but we spoke to the sister. She's... Um, She'll be on the pod within the month, um, and about two months ago, we had bumped into Edie Boyd, the founder of the 50 Boys, the first guy who put Meech on, he really taught Meech and T. Um, we caught up to him at Sting at, uh, yeah. at Al's party, yeah, at the, and uh, Al's we'll be party. reaching out to him. So we got a lot of hot interviews and things coming up, and the cool thing about when you do these kind of things like we're doing with the doc is... Um, it gives a real good reason to get the family all back together, grin, and bring some shine to um, the street history of Detroit in a town like Detroit, where street history and actual city history all get married together. Yeah, it's a rich, rich, uh, rich history of uh, crime in our city. So you got some conch fish? I had the conch fish, dude. <laughs> Man. Oh God, yeah, I, I I couldn't have imagined it like that. I mean, I've seen it on TV. And, and and to actually see it and you guys will see some of the footage that I recorded and and captured but uh the Bahamas the Bahamas is bad man yeah yeah that it was a good time we're looking for we're gonna have to go back down there um because uh, we're really I think of the opinion that uh, Basil's story needs to be a full project 
oh, it, it's boy. so much to it. And we're going to touch on a little bit more in this episode. And this is episode 65 of the Motown Mafia podcast. Again, a Big Boss Filmworks production. Uh, please hit the like, share, and subscribe. I suspect we're going through some type of shadow banning and all. So yeah. um, I don't know what we've done to upset the good people. But we're, we're, we're going to keep it plugging along. So please, if you're out there, hit the like, share, and subscribe button. It really helps with the algorithm. Yeah, yeah, and a, and a big up to ABC, a better concept studios where we were filming uh, Motown Mafia. We were filming some scenes and some interviews for Motown Mafia too. Big up to them. Big shout out to Karen. Yeah, the hospitality that the sisters. Um, you know, there's there's unseen um, rewards and pay that comes from doing the kind of work we do. Yeah. Um, and that was one of them when. You get a chance to do business with other black entrepreneurs. Yes. And and all the stereotypes and myths and misinformation that we can't work together and that we're always hating on each other. When you see that sister where Karen and them just opened up their studio to us. I mean, right. And was just like, whatever we can do to help. Yeah. yeah. You know, now the flip side, we didn't come there with a with our hand out in a hat. Because business is business. Business is business. But um just yeah just really a class act what those ladies are doing down there absolutely um, absolutely so in fact we need to we'll need to put it in the description because if you guys are in south florida if you're doing content and you're in your basement or you're in the office and you're looking for a more professional setting um if you do if you're into music they got a music studio inside oh, their man. facility they got all the bells and whistles it's a ready-to-go kind of situation. The DJ and me just just lost my mind up in there. I thought about my days as a DJ to have a resource. I didn't get out enough. I didn't get out enough back in them days, man. Yeah. Oh gosh, it was beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, you know, uh, part of my life plan is relocating to uh, South Florida. So I was like, uh, Karen, is it too early to put up the Big Boss posters <laughs> yet? I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, but yeah. um, no, that's cool, and we definitely will do. And that's the name of the of our company, right? ABC. Studios? ABC, a better concept studios. Okay. In Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale, yeah. Yeah, yeah. look them up. Look, look them, them up. up, and we'll, we'll we will provide a link for them. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a character in this genre that um, we've been looking to cover and, and talk about. Um, he's an absolute legend, you know, and I. Despite of some of our commenters who always say, why do we glorify certain figures? You know, our, whether it's my dad or Eddie Jackson or Frank Matthews or any of these kind of people, we're not attempting to go. We're just attempting to chronicle people who have led some exceptional lives regardless of what they did for their to get their money and their impacts on their community. And it's up to you guys out there to, you know, to be the judge, the jury, or the executioner, whether they did more good or more bad. But what can't be disputed is the impact they had on their communities. And in our case, that's the community of Detroit. And in this guy's case, uh, Harlem. And I don't think it's a understatement to say, um, I'm like, what's that feedback? Is that the radio over there or something? What do you hear? Anyway. Yeah. Um, not radios, no. Um, sure. Did they impact their community? So the man that we're speaking about is a man that goes by the name of Pee Wee Kirkland, born Richard Kirk Kirkland. Um, you know, everybody's kind of heard of the guy. I mean, he's been featured in Don Diva, uh, Feds Magazine, mm -hmm. um, just an absolute legend. But there are a couple little anecdotes in this story. and. We, his story is definitely not one that you can cover in one segment of a pod. So I'm throwing it out there for people who are into this kind of thing. If you're not familiar with this guy's character and his events. And just as a black man and as a black businessman that really likes to give credit when you see a brother with business acumen, regardless of whether he's on Wall Street or on the block. When you see that kind of business acumen, that it be pointed out. Mm -hmm. So... Pee Wee Kirkland, according to him now, started his life of crime very early, 13, 14. Okay. Right? With the regular shit, still in bicycles, still in this, still in that. You know, very typical, of course, we were talking about still the, the late remnants of Jim Crow and segregation, mm -hmm. even in a place like New York City, right? Um, very quickly, unlike most hoodlums, which again shows uh, young hoodlums, 
unlike most, he had a little bigger ambition. So he started going down to the jewelry district of New York, stealing jewelry. Okay. And the legend goes that on one of his snatching grabs, and, and that this, let me be fair to it and just not make him out, because not only did he start stealing jewelry, it led to him actually becoming a de facto jeweler, because he, he as he was stealing so much jewelry, he took the time to actually learn about clarity and cuts of diamonds. Okay. So, because, as anybody who's been out here in the world, you know, I've been there, I've been at the spot, and people come with a ring that's worth $10,000, but they don't know whether it's real or fake. Okay. Guy working the door at the spot be like, man, I give you $20 for it, I don't even know if this shit is real. Next thing you know, they're taking the shit to the jeweler in the morning, jeweler puts the scope on, it's like, oh man, this is a hell of a stone you got here. And just because somebody didn't know, they just sold something that was worth 20000 for $20. And happened. vice versa. Somebody come and say, man, this ring worth $20,000. This is a bad piece. Look at how it's shining. And somebody working the spot don't know no better. And like, what you want for it? Man, give me $2,000. And then only to find out he just bought some Cracker Jack right. box pot right. of jewelry that's his costume and it's worth. If it get anywhere near moisture, it's going to turn green. <laughs> not only can you not take a shower in it, nigga, you better not run no water by it. <laughs> and it's going to... Um, but Mr. Pee Wee Kirkland did not suffer that fate because he took the time to become an expert on jewelry because he was an ascending jewelry thief, right? Mm -hmm. And as the legend goes, he made a big score. And this is, we're talking about this Pee Wee, this point in Pee Wee's criminal career is the mid 60s. Okay. So you're talking about over 50 some odd years ago. Mm hmm. So that said, because supposedly he stole about $300,000 worth of jewelry. 300000 66 money. So I know sometimes audience, but there's a, there's a thing called inflation. That's why gas this year is $5, $4 a gallon. And three years ago, gas was two fifty a gallon, right? Same. Your same five dollars only buy you half as much gas as it did just two years ago. Well, in Pee Wee's day, gas was fifty cent a gallon. Mm -hmm. See, money was worth a lot more. So when we do these kind of calculations, what we're saying is that that three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry that Pee Wee's got mm -hmm. was in today's money like three million. Three million, All right? Really, a little bit more. Let's just say a ten to one. The money's worth ten times more. Money was worth 10 times more back then than it's worth now. Correct. Right? So, him being again an enterprising young man who's learned his way around the streets a little bit, he knows some Italian gentlemen. Mm hmm. Who, this, they're going to be the fence. He takes the 300K worth of jewelry to the mob. Mm -hmm. The mob being the mob, like, okay, we we'll buy it, but we ain't going to give you no bread. Okay. But you will live up in Harlem, and already by this time, the the, the Vietnam War influx of soldiers with drug problems was coming and the the uh, the beatnik hippies was already getting high and Harlem was already starting to and if you guys follow the show on Epic um, Godfather Harlem, great show with Forrest, awesome Whitt show. Forrest Whitaker playing Bumpy Johnson it depicts that era so again Pee Wee, Her Pee -wee Kirkland did not start the heroin business in Harlem that existed, he lived in that world and he's a product of that environment. Long story short though, he takes the money, he takes the jury to the mob. Mob checks it out, it's real. Which they agree on the number. 300,000 is the number they agree on. Thing is the mob is like, well, we ain't gonna give you 300,000 in cash, but we give you 300,000 in work. You just take it back to Harlem, turn it into cash. Um, Reminds me of a lot. Uh, you ever seen? Are you that talking movie? Lord of War? Lord of War, right? Diversify. The Diver Diversify, right? Absolutely. You guys don't know what we're talking about. There's a movie with a guy <laughs> named Nicholas Cage who plays. It's a true character. Um, actually, he's the guy that they cover in Lord of War. The basketball player Brittany Grimer, who was a detainee yeah, yeah. in Russia. Okay, yeah. The prisoner. That's the, the, him. That was his Russian counterpart. Oh. I'll show you how history okay. goes. Full circle. That's who they traded her for, was his Russian counterpart. Whoa. Um, 
But anyway, this character played by Nicolas Cage is a big time arms dealer. And he goes to make this deal with uh, these Colombian drug lords. <laughs> and he brings all of them all the guns they wanted. And he's like, okay, where's my money? And instead of giving them money, they give him a suitcase full of bricks of yay. Bricks of yay. And he's like, what am I supposed to do with this? And the Colombian's like, diversify. <laughs> <laughs>